What's up guys, it's Red Raven here. Um I got a quick tutorial to, for you today. Um it should help you guys out a lot and it should help you save a lot of your computing power when you're making songs that start to get very complex. Um so here I'm gonna have you open whatever your favorite synthesizer is and whatever your favorite sound that you've made. Hell, I don't even care if you use a preset for this. Um so here is I'm just gonna go to Blink Bank, and I'm going to load up a sound that I've made in blue. Um, let's go ahead and use Gritty Reese. Here's what it sounds like at a C5. Nothing special, just a simple Reese bass. Um, so now we don't need blue up. I'm going to instead bring the mixer over, and you see I have a channel for blue and a channel for my microphone, so I just ignore my microphone. So here's blue. I'm going to throw an Edison on here, and we're ready to do this. Now, what I'm going to show you is um, what I call synthesizer looping, because what we're going to do is we're going to record a note, and we're going to loop it and use it in a fruity sampler. So um, I'm going to go ahead and set this to record on input. This number is the max amount of minutes that Edison will record for. Um, so that doesn't really matter for this. And I'm going to go ahead and click the record light on. And we're set to record. So I'm going to go ahead and press a C5. And I'm going to hold it down for a little bit. And that's long enough for now. Um, normally I would record longer. But this is a tutorial and I need to save as much time as possible. So I'm going to trim off the end there, and I'm going to the beginning of the sound. And I'm going to just trim it off. All right, so you see we have a waveform in Edison. Um, I'll go ahead and boost it up so that you can see it better. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I look for a spot where the wave um, is very similar. And I see that right here and right here. Whoop right here and right here you see they have this little block section they have pretty much the same two peaks coming out of it so i'm just going to click and drag right around in those areas here and i'm going to zoom in at the thing and what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at the wave and i'm going to pick a spot that i think will be a good start point i'm going to go right here because it crosses the zero very nicely and it's a pretty steady slope up so I'm going to now out and zoom back in on the end of this loop and you see we have a fairly similar wave over here um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do it right here where it crosses the zero actually Yeah, that'll work. So you see here the the last wave is heading up and at the beginning I've got it coming from the up part. So to make it loop nicely. So if I hit the figure eight and it'll loop, we'll hear how that sounds. Hopefully there won't be a click between the end of the loop and the beginning. So you hear there's a little bit of a click, so we can clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to actually... I'm going to... I think it's the... I mean, it, the, the waveform over here doesn't quite look the same, so... I'm going to scroll back here to where it looks more the same. And I'm going to just reset my loop point there. And let's take a listen now. All right, there's less of a click now, and you'll get you'll get this looping thing down with some practice, and you'll be able to tell where it'll loop okay and where it won't. It's just a matter of practice. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off the loop button just so we don't actually need that, and I'm going to go ahead and click the little flag with the ABC next to it. And I'm going to go set loop. You can use the keyboard shortcut Alt L, and you now see we have loop points. Now, 
what was the purpose of that? If we drag this into a sampler right now, we'll be able to press any key we want and it will play for however long we want because we set up these loop points. We can delete the end of it, we can do whatever the hell we want with it. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go edit properties and I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna give it a name Reese Tutorial and I'm gonna go ahead and click accept. If you record a note other than a C5, you can change your root note right here. And that way when you drag this into a sampler, it will already set your root note for the key that you recorded. So everything will be in tune and the right note. But I recorded a C5, so that's fine. I'm gonna click accept. You see in Edison, we now have the name Reese Tutorial. Now I'm going to shrink Edison down a bit. And I'm going to bring up my browser. I need to shrink it down some to fit it in here. Okay. And you see a couple Reese sounds that I've already done this to over here. Now I use a folder I've set up in my browser um, called My Samples, and then I have a subfolder called Synth Loops. I'm going to go ahead and click this paper with the cursor. I'm going to click and drag it on my folder named synth loops. You now see Reese tutorial shows up in my browser. Cool, right? So if we bring up the step sequencer, we can now drag the sound that we just looped. Let me drag this out of the view here, sorry. And we now have the sound that we looped with the loop points in a fruity sampler. Now, how is this helpful? One, it saves a lot of computing power because you're not having to process a huge synthesizer such as Massive or Blue or whatever you may be using. Um, sorry about that. So if I bring the sampler up, and I'm, you're going to want to make sure that you have this light, Use Loop Points, highlighted. If you don't have that highlighted, the note will not sustain for however long you press the key. Um, so you can reverse the sound, you can normalize it, you can do whatever you want. You can use anything within the sampler to manipulate your sound. Okay, you can do an arpeggiator with it. Um, we'll go with the three. Pretty cool, right? Um, so yeah, that's basically the gist of this tutorial. You can record any synthesizer sound you want and loop it and save it as a sampled wave and you're good to go. Um, a little tip, uh, the longer the note you record, uh, the better because your loop section can then be longer and it won't sound quite as looped. And another cool thing about this is, since we recorded a C5, if I play anything other than that, any of the modulation that was going on within this will speed up if I play a higher note or slow down if I play a lower note. So you can get some really cool expressive things if you have like an, maybe not an LFO, but like if you have like envelopes and detuning within your synth sound, yeah, they will actually speed up and slow down with your key. Um, you can do tonal, you can do all of this stuff in here. It's it's really mind-blowing the options you have um, because now within your piano roll you can use FL's glide notes. So like if I click, if I bring up my piano roll here and I draw a note in and we'll just make it a one bar and then I click this thing here to draw a slide note. Pretty cool, right? You can use anything Fruity Loops uses by default on its own plugins with any sound from any synthesizer if you sample it and set loop points. That is this tutorial, and I am Red Raven. Peace and out.